Aynen Metes Çankılasın. Skima. Nelesin ek? So. Davik. Davik. Ya. Ne var de kaç ne lütfen akide? Ah Luizan. Bet sima met mi tasra peşüten kmiyatız. Pasta. Mhm. Ben kes teren ki nelu harcarın çe patas kanelu ama. Ha.
Hi, everyone. Hi, Louisa. Hi, Louisa. Okay. Um, I guess uh, Louisa is passing. Group was messy as introduction on it, but the Louisa and Cop. Why of this, Bolorin? Good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good afternoon. Um, so let's see, I'll speak in English. There may be some people on the call who don't speak Armenian. Uh, um, so yeah, welcome all. And we have the other people joining. Uh, I'm Aram Hajan. I'm the Dean, uh, here in the College of Science and Engineering. Also on the call, there's several of us uh, from our AUA team, including Rubina Danilova, who's in the nice Artsakh-themed background. You see her. Lisa Harjinan was here a second ago, and she'll join uh, once again very quickly. She's the program chair in the Computer and Information Science program. I see Irina Zorabian, head of our admissions. And maybe there's some others here from... Uh, 
from the staff. Oh, Karina, I see you. Sorry, I just don't recognize all the names and uh, without the pictures. But anyway, the point is we have a big team of people here uh, and we're ready to answer questions you may have. Uh, we're here, basically, this is a virtual open house. So just to introduce you to the program, obvious, I'll state the obvious before we begin. This has been probably the most challenging year of uh, most people's lives anyway, uh, between the war and the pandemic and, and probably lots of other aspects as well. And so I just want you to know that we're obviously uh, aware of all that and, and fighting the good fight. Uh, with each of you and, and together, we also are looking forward uh, trying to be responsive to your needs uh, for the future. So um, I don't have more to say at this point, although I'm happy to hear uh, questions and, and the discussion. Uh, we have an exciting curriculum and program that uh, has proven to be at the forefront and the leading edge of many different industries and academic directions in IT and in high, techno high tech and engineering and whatnot. And so I guess I'll hand the microphone maybe off to Rubina or Louisa or others who might wanna speak and then we'll open the floor to questions. So welcome all and thank you for coming. Rub. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, uh, before uh, starting of our discussion, I would uh, kindly ask uh, everyone to introduce yourself and to introduce uh, your background. Um, I see, uh, let's start from Anahit Tumanyan. Uh, hi everyone, um, for the upcoming presentation. Um, I work as a quality assurance engineer and I actually graduated from AUA, uh, undergraduate bachelor's program in business. Good, thank you. Edgar? Okay, hi RP. Hello, yes. can you hear me? Yes, Harfi, please introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. I've graduated from Yerevan State University uh, and nice to meet everyone here. Nice to meet you. And which department, Harfi? Department of Biology, Biochemistry. Biology. And yes. you would like to um, um, enter the Computer Information Science Master's program? Yes, because during my work, uh, very uh, frequently, I require such um, background and information as well. Yeah, good. Mary? Okay. Mary, yeah. Hi, all. Hi. Um, hello. Hello. Uh, I have graduated from National Polytechnical University of Armenia, the Faculty of Applied Mathematics and Informatics. And uh, now I want to enter for master's in computer science. Good, thank you very much. Mari Galstian. Hi, Hi. I'm a senior student at the American University of Armenia studying BA in business from uh, economics track. And I think now I need some changes. That's why I want to apply for the CIS. Good, thank master's. you very much, Mari. Uh, Aram. Hello, thank you. I'm also a senior student in AUA at AUA uh, in computer science program, and interested in continuing uh, my study in the master's program as well. Uh, thank you very much, Arpine. Hello. Good evening. Uh, Currently, I study in AUA as well, in the business department. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my fourth year of studies, and I just wanted to know what options I have for master's degree in AUA. Good. Thank you, Arpine. Zarui? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Zarui. Yeah. So, hello, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity. 
Uh, so I've graduated from French University in Armenia, uh, and I'm holding a, a, a degree in management, uh, but I'm currently working as a developer, programmer, and I'm interested in computer science program as well. Thank you, Zari. Uh, Toma? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tamara. Uh, I recently graduated from Yerevan State University as a faculty of economics and management. Uh, I'm very much interested in CS program, CS master's program. Thank you. And I guess Harpy have already introduced, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. So as you see, uh, we have very different backgrounds, biology, uh, applied mathematics, business, etc. And we have master program that is um, designed in a way to um, let everyone uh, to reach the uh, desired um, uh, quality, the desired disciplines. So Luisa Harutunyan is um, program chair for this program. And uh, I would uh, ask Luisa Arzunian to present what this, the structure of this program and how it is structured to be suitable for everyone, to prepare everyone to the same level. All right, hi everyone. First of all, I'm sorry for, I apologize for being absent a little bit. Um, um, so the program is a bit flexible for us to accommodate uh, all backgrounds, uh, the main, skeleton of the program is as follows. We, it's a 48 credit program where each course that we have is a three credit course. So roughly speaking, we're talking about 16 courses during two years, or maybe a little more depending on what background that you have. So some of those courses are core courses. In other words, they are mandatory courses that everyone must take in order to graduate. Some of those courses are uh, concentration courses. So it could be, for example, a concentration in data science or a concentration in computer science. And then we also have a couple of courses where you have the choice to take uh, free electives. In other words, courses that do not necessarily, not courses that are not necessarily mandatory or they are, they do not necessarily have to be in a concentration. They could be from a different program as well. Um, so it, that totals into um, 16 courses, 48 credits. Uh, now, considering the fact that I, I did not catch everybody's background, but I caught the end of it, uh, that we have students from different universities, from different backgrounds. So if you, uh, for example, are coming from a different background, if your bachelor's degree is not in computer science, then we also have uh, what, what is mandatory for you is what we call bridge courses. So in other words, these are undergraduate courses that you must take to give you that fundamental base before you can continue taking uh, the graduate level courses, the CIS program courses. So we have six courses like that, uh, which are the fundamental courses for computer science. Uh, it is introduction to object-oriented programming, data structures, algorithms, discrete mathematics, probability and statistics, and computer organization. So these are all mandatory courses. Note that these courses, these six bridge courses that we have, you do not get credit for those courses. They are not part of that 48 credit program that you must fill. Now, um, for some of you, if you are coming from a background uh, where you might have taken those courses during your studies, then you do not have to take the course. What you can do is you can write an exam for it. And if you pass, then that course for you and you can continue taking, uh, taking all other courses. For those of you that are coming from uh, AUA and you have a CS background or S background, so to speak, uh, then for you the program is a bit shorter because you have already covered the necessary, uh, some necessary courses. We have a new program that's coming out which uh, allows you to finish your studies maybe in a, in a year and a half instead of two years. So uh, there are some uh, details in that regard that we hope to see very soon. Um, this is roughly uh, the program that we have. If there are any, if you guys have any specific questions that you would like me to answer, then please go ahead. Uh, I do have a question if I may. Uh, 
-hmm. You said um, if uh, you haven't taken these courses, you might take an exam. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get that part. You if, might take an exam. If you have taken a similar course here in content in your undergraduate studies, then you may write an exam for it. If you have not taken a course like that, then you may not. Uh, Anahe, can you remind me your background? Uh, it's business. Um, business. Have you taken any of the six courses that I mentioned, like history of math, computer organization, introduction to object-oriented programming, data structure? Uh, I've taken, you said, I think, statistics and probability. Um, I've taken some calculus. Um, the thing is that, for example, object-oriented programming, I, um, I'm familiar with that from my work. Like I said, I work as a gray engineer, so I have an idea. I actually work with um, Java, so I'm wondering if that somehow counts as... Uh, we may discuss that as once you come in, if that will count for you to be eligible to write the exam. It will not be, it will not count for a, a direct waiver, let me put it that way. Huh? So, okay, so it's just one exam that you take? Right, I mean, precisely. You, or, you think there are six courses that are absolutely mandatory for you to take as an undergraduate level, right, on an undergraduate level in order for you to continue the graduate level because mm -hmm. the graduate level courses are based on these. If without these, you will basically not survive for the other courses. Mm -hmm. So these are fundamentals. So if you do not have that background, then you have to take them. If you do have the background from elsewhere, we will we, we have to look at this on an individual case mm -hmm. by case. Uh, and we will see, you may write the exam if uh, we allow it. And if you pass the exam, then you do not take that course. And uh, we let you take courses that are a continuation of those. And is that decided after you get accepted or I mean? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes, yes. Got it, thank once, you. Once, uh, once you get accepted, then we do uh, advising sessions. We also do one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions with students to understand their background, to see what is the best way to uh, lead them to understand how they could possibly proceed uh, with their studies to finish. Okay. Because I, 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 as I understand, it, most students want to finish as soon as possible. Uh, you know, they do not want to prolong this as much. But, so that's why we uh, do one-on-one -on -one with the students. Um, so note that with these, uh, dear Mary, I've actually seen your hand up. I'm not ignoring you. Uh, just give me one, one second to say this. Um, so with considering these uh, bridge courses, if you come from a different background, you have to take the, uh, the original program is 16 courses plus these six bridge courses if you come from a different background. So in total, the chances of you graduating in two years is pretty slim. So we're looking at roughly like uh, two and a half years or so, maybe even three, depending what kind of a background that you come, in, come from. You may have, uh, some of you may have a little more background than others. So it depends where you fall in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mari, Anahit, yes, go ahead. Um, actually, just a follow-up question, and maybe you're going to address that, but um, so these courses you said in two years is the general, uh, like the amount of time that it takes to graduate, but are these like evening lessons or does that change the... Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. You said evening lessons? Yeah, I mean, are those... No, no, no. They are undergraduate courses. They are under undergraduate courses, so as a result, it goes according to the regular schedule that we have with undergraduate classes. I so, mean the yeah. master, the actual courses, the credit courses, are those like? Three? No, no, we generally uh, schedule those in the morning. We generally, we've, at least the statistics, so to speak, shows that uh, most students, uh, some of our students, at least from the second year, start working. So we uh, schedule these courses in the morning to, so that they will have time right after uh, their courses to get to work and so on. So most of them are mm -hmm. scheduled uh, from morning until about like, 2.30ish or so, depending, depending on the uh, schedule from year to year, but we generally don't have evening classes. Okay, thank you. Mari and then Zarhi. Yes, thank you. I just uh, wanted to ask, uh, what about the AUA students who have covered some of those courses? And uh, I know the conditions, you, I've received email with those courses that are, are required or not and the grades. 
So uh, how will this be decided? What, what do you mean by covered? In other words, you mean you have taken the course? Uh, not all the courses, but some of them, for example, statistics, as I remember, there were uh, options that we have taken applied stati uh, statistics, econometrics, and uh, one more course, I don't remember. Um, generally speaking, our statistics courses are, are you from business as well? Yes. Um, so generally speaking, the CS uh, probability in statistics course is heavier than what generally is covered in business. Um, so if uh, best case scenario is, again, I said, depending on your background, we might let you write the exam to waive it. Otherwise, if you have not specifically taken the CS course that we, uh, the CS undergraduate course, the bridge course that we are uh, asking as a requirement, then you would have to take it. Okay, so uh, what about those uh, six bridge courses? We're going to cover them before starting the um, courses of some of, them, some of them you can cover before starting the courses uh, you see here's the thing uh, those 16 courses that's part of your program uh, some of them have prerequisites which are some of these bridge courses mm -hmm. some of them don't have prerequisites right for example uh, a course software project management because I see David here he doesn't teach that and that just came to my mind um, that uh, that course doesn't have a, a prerequisite. So as a result, for example, you can take that course during your first semester. But for example, if you want to take another core course uh, like advanced algorithms, you cannot take that because the prerequisite for advanced algorithms is the undergraduate bridge course introduction to algorithms. The prerequisite for introduction to algorithms is the bridge course data structures. And of that is the bridge courses uh, introduction to OOP and discrete math. So during your first semester, maybe even the first year, some of your courses might be bridge courses, and some of your courses might be courses that count for credit. So it's a bit of a mix and match, right? Okay. So it's not completely, oh, you have to do the six first, and then you can move on to your degree. No, we try to optimize as much as possible to lessen the time that you take to study. And uh, one more question. So we're going to take those uh, courses and uh, the credits of those courses are not going to be counted neither in our bachelor uh, for the precisely. bachelor degree and nor for the master's, yes? Precisely. precisely. So in those courses, by the way, those bridge courses, um, it's a pass-fail courses. So uh, for, ex for those of you who are from AUA, you're familiar, I believe, with the grading system. Um, for those of you that are outside of AUA, the grading system is AUA, it's letter-based. So the highest grade is an A, it's a GPA of, uh, that is an A plus or A, it's a GPA for both of them. Then the lettering goes to B, C, D and plus minus for each of those. So these bridge courses, it's, it does not affect your GPA. These are pass or fail, right? So uh, undergraduate students, for example, take it. For them, it's with a grade, but for you, it is not. So basically all we require of you is to pass that course. Um, Zarzi. Yeah, um, so I was wondering, so uh, are the bridge courses for extra pay and are they only applicable for full admission? Uh, extra pay, Rubin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they pay by semester. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I need to add something. Uh, Louisa, could you please repeat the question because I was talking. Um, so the question was the bridge courses there for extra pay, but as I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they pay by the semester. Um, the, the bridge courses, if uh, sometimes you will need, you would need to extra pay for them. But if, uh, since uh, the full-time student can take three to five courses in semester, so some of them are registered for semesters and thus you are not paying separately for these courses. And what I would like to add for those uh, who are students now at American University, you may take these courses as, for example, Janet course or a uh, free elective course and you you will get uh, credits right now for those courses and you will not need to take those courses when you will be admitted for the computer science program 
uh, this is, uh, for example, uh, which program can we do that for? For example, discrete math. You can yeah, take business, this, for example. This, yeah. Sorry. Like for example, those coming from business. Uh, yeah. 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 If you are taking uh, the discrete math as as a, a free elective course, then you will get uh, the credits for your um, main. Um, program, I mean, uh, you have free electives and you will get it as, as a free elective. And after that, you will not be, uh, you will not need to retake that course when you will be um, uh, in, um, admitted to the computer science program. So other questions, please. Yeah, and um, I was wondering uh, if they are applicable for a fall admission only. No, for, for fall and spring admission. Well, sorry, I, I didn't I catch the question. Uh, what? Sorry? I don't think you quite understood the question. Uh, could we ask you to repeat? Yes, yeah, so if I'm like, for example, applying for spring admission, uh, uh, do I have to get that bridge course still? The problem is that some courses are uh, relaying, are based on this knowledge. So uh, without taking discrete math, you will not be take, you will not be able to take, uh, for example, data structures. And without data structures, you will not be able to take uh, introduction to algorithms. And after introduction to, since introduction to algorithms is also a bridge course, but there is a core course in the main program, which is advanced algorithms, which will which you will not be able to take without uh, the introduction to algorithms. So this is the chain of courses, and you yes you will need to take those courses during your studies, and you will be able to take each next level course only after taking the previous level course. So with uh, admission with spring admissions, you will be uh, we will discuss your personal. Um, schedule uh, every time before the semester. Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, yeah, I have finished. Yes, Zari. Yeah, I have finished with my questions. Thank you. Yeah. Any other okay. Uh, yes, uh, you said full time, and so I understand there is also part time option. Could you specify? Yes, that? yes there's full time and part time. So, full time is 9 to 15 credits. So, each course is three credits. So, we're talking about three to five courses here. That's full time. Uh, and part time is uh, one to two courses, right? So, note that uh, during your studies, you can decide, for example, one semester to be part time, the next semester to be full time, and so on. So, that's very flexible. So, for example, let's say you know that next semester you're going to be working, you do not have that much time to concentrate on your studies, then what uh, you may do is that you can apply for a part-time and in the spring semester be part-time. And then the next semester, maybe you don't have that much work and you can fully concentrate and you decide to switch to a part-time. So that's very flexible. You can switch back and forth. Uh, but except in this case, please note that if you are a part-time student, then you are not considered for scholarship, financial aid, in other words, right? So financial aid is for uh, full-time students. That's the, that's the disadvantage of it. Okay, thank you. And I actually didn't quite get the answer to the previous question about the payment for the, uh, the six bridge courses. All right, so, so generally speaking, how you pay is by the semester. So for example, if you're, you know, you're, if you're registered as a full-time, you pay full tuition. If you're registered as a part-time, you pay part-time tuition. So uh, let's say in one semester you are taking uh, four courses and uh, let's say two of those courses are bridge courses and two of those courses are uh, counted as credit, then we count that as four courses and therefore you pay full-time tuition. That is it. So there is no extra payment in that regard. Okay, that's clear, thank you. Right, so it depends, it really depends on uh, how many courses you're taking. So if full-time, full-time, part-time, part-time, but if, for example, if you end up at the end uh, 
last semester you have one course, then you would have to pay for that course, obviously. That makes sense. Any other questions? Uh, so what's about uh, applying? What uh, we need to do for applying and uh, exams? Some, I don't know, some results from the previous studies. Mm -hmm. Let me answer those uh, that uh, to that question since this uh, refers to the admissions process. Uh, some of you already know that the computer information science program offers both spring and fall admission. Only those who have already obtained their bachelor degree can apply for spring admission so that you already have uh, your diploma before the start of classes. And those of you who are still uh, studying in the final year of your studies, you may apply for uh, fall admission. We have specific deadlines uh, that you must submit a complete application, and by that date, you must already uh, have taken your test. We have three uh, deadlines, early, regular, and rolling. Now uh, I will share these dates, uh, the application submission deadline dates in our chat here. Uh, the early admission deadline is January 31st. Uh, the regular deadline is April 15, and rolling deadline is June 15. We always advise uh, our applicants to apply either by early or regular deadline dates, so that the earlier you apply, the sooner you know about your uh, admission decision and you plan accordingly. And besides, if you apply for financial uh, aid, uh, uh, again, the same uh, finance is limited, uh, the spaces are limited, and those, if you want to get a scholarship, then uh, most probably only those who apply either by early or regular uh, admission uh, have chances uh, to get scholarship as well. Uh, by submitting the complete application by the deadline, uh, we mean uh, to submit an application, an online application, and take the required tests. Those of you who are uh, currently studying uh, at AUA, you may apply for an English proficiency test waiver. For those uh, who are studying outside and uh, where the uh, language of instruction uh, has not been English, you will need uh, to take either TOEFL IBT or the TOEFL IBT home test as a proof of your English proficiency or IELTS academic or IELTS indicator exam. We have specific target scores set. For the TOEFL IBT, it is 79, and for the IELTS uh, test, it is 6.5. Arina, do you want to add something? I do. I actually, uh, Rubina John, who is the host? Can I ask uh, to get co host status? Uh, Armine, Armine. Uh, sure, right now. Thank you. So I, I think uh, Gata pretty much summed, summarized everything that needs to be done. What I do want to do is give you guys a few resources that you can look at after this chat. Um, a lot of people don't realize that um, all of our requirements, everything about our graduate programs are listed directly on our website. So once you're able to see my screen, please just let me know. Okay, so you should be able to see it now. You see the graduate admissions page? Yes, we do. Okay, great. So you guys will, um, you know, in terms of, you know, how do we apply, the best page to look at is the application requirements. Um, it brings you here, you select read more. Um, and, you know, there's very, very detailed information listed. So as Gata mentioned, you guys need to complete an application. The application is completely online. There's no need for you to come to AUA for it. Um, we have currently the application for spring 2021 is open. Um, so if you are planning to apply for spring 2021, go ahead and uh, apply up until December 1st. But if you're applying for fall 2021, then don't start your application until, um, you know, sometime in mid-December when we launch that application. This is the information regarding uh, proof of English language proficiency um, that you guys can get. Again, you'll see here it's admissions.aua.am. You're going to then the graduate site and then going under application requirements. So everything is detailed here. We do have internal assessments for those of you, for whatever reason, um, who are unable to take, um, you know, either the TOEFL or the IELTS, including the home exams, or do not get a waiver. 
These are the graduate standardized tests. Now you'll see here is ISM and CIS. Um, so for those of you that are studying within the BAB program, I think a few of you mentioned you were, these are the courses that you need to do to get a waiver for the GRE or GMAT requirement. Um, and then if you're studying CS, uh, data science or engineering sciences, then this is the GPA that you need to get that waiver. And this is information on how to apply for that waiver. Um, in addition, part of the application includes recommendation letters, your CV, um, some other, you know, items, as well as, uh, you know, uh, relevant work experience. There's nothing necessary for the CIS or ISM. Um, so that's pretty much it. I definitely recommend you guys look at this page as a resource. Um, there's a lot of information. We also have information about the selection process, how things work. Um, there's detailed information about, you know, the deadlines, how to apply and things like that. So, you know, there, there's updated information here about the um, spring and fall 2020 cycles when we, um, you know, notify applicants, um, target scores uh, and, and the likes of that. Um, the Office of Admissions, we, we receive a lot of, um, you know, obviously the university is currently closed because of the COVID, um, you know, pandemic. Um, if you guys need to get in touch with us, these are every, uh, all of the phone numbers that are forwarded directly to our cell phones. Um, so please take note of these. Again, these are listed directly on the website. Um, or you can email us at grad or em.grad uh, em at aua.am. So that's it, I think, from Garian and I. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions about how to apply. Um, the, the final one thing I do want to know is for some reason our applicants, um, you know, think that they, they have to apply, get admitted, and then apply for financial aid. That is actually not the case. If you're a citizen of Armenia, you should be applying for tuition assistance at the same time as your application. Um, and one does not have anything to do with the other. So if, for example, a lot of people think, let me get in, so it doesn't impact negatively my application. Um, there should be no concern, right? We, we do need blind admissions for our citizens of Armenia. So the fact that you're applying for financial aid will not at all negatively impact your application. So that's it, I think, from, from our end in terms of like the application. Hopefully you guys will, will um, go and check out the website. And then as Scott, I mentioned, you know, she sent you the deadlines within the chat, um, but those are also listed on, online. The tuition is there, how to apply and things like that. Everything is listed in detail um, on that page. Um, can I ask a question now? Sure, Anahit. Um, can I go ahead and apply for the waivers as early as um, today, for example? Yep, and we recommend you, the sooner you do it, the better. Okay, so I can send one email for both and just we'll get an answer. You're not, so so for the GRE waiver, you're doing an email. For the English waiver, you're doing that through the em.aua.am system. So they're a little bit different, they're, they're separate processes, but yes, you <laughs> could do that um, in the next couple of days. Gotcha, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions regarding the uh, application process? Uh, can I, not the application process, but generally the requirements. So yes, sure. for graduation requirements for CIS, there is a point about AUA environmental requirement. Can you please? Uh, no. provide some details on that and also my second question you already mentioned about the possibility of shorter program of one and a half year for some uh, AUA graduates um, can you provide and elaborate on it what part sure. of it is known at this point sure, sure. Of course. thank you uh, so on the environmental uh, course so you have as I mentioned there's a 48 credit course and in addition to that, there is one credit environmental course, which is mandatory. It's uh, required by the university that needs to be taken. So that is, uh, that is a course that needs to be completed. It's a one credit course. That is that, and it's a pass fail course. So there's no grade for it. It's just that it's a university requirement to be done. Um, in regard to your second question, uh, 
I'm, I cannot quite place your voice. Can you tell me your last name if you're a CS student? <laughs> yes, it's me, Mr. Sarkson. Mr. Sarkson, yeah. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was wondering who it was. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, we're looking at a new program now. It's in the process, so it, it hasn't been finalized yet. But we're looking at roughly three semesters. So uh, that's four semesters, uh, four courses per semester. So roughly, if you were planning it, take that way. So it's uh, the 48 credit, uh, the 16 courses gets down, gets cut down to 12. And the way that it gets cut down to 12 is as follows. Um, there will be 10 core courses. And among those 10 core courses will be courses for which you may get uh, credit for, so to speak. And those four courses are database systems, machine learning, theory of computing, and software engineering. So if you have taken any of those four courses during uh, your bachelor's degree, then you do not have to take those four courses during the CIS program, and those are core courses. Therefore, uh, uh, it gets cut down. The, four, uh, the 16 courses gets cut down to 12. Uh, is, are there any more details that you would like me to go into? No, that's fine, I guess. Thank you. Right, so that's, that's where you want. The environmental uh, credit that also stays and so on and so forth. So, and of course there are the concentration and the free electives and so on. So we're looking at roughly the new program for you guys, we're looking at roughly 10 core courses, we're looking at four concentration courses and two free electives, something like that. So that's in the process of being finalized. Okay, thank you. Anytime. Any other questions? Right, I was going to ask the same thing. Um, do you maybe have um, some statistics on what the students go on to do after they graduate, like a general? Um, yes, sure, we have. Uh, they do very different uh, work, starting from uh, just programmers, uh, quality assurance, and the aim of the program is to prepare the middle level um, technical staff for uh, IT companies. So we have even uh, people who are working as uh, head, uh, head of IT companies. And, uh, and uh, uh, we also have students um, who uh, went to uh, PhD programs after graduation and also some uh, are, went uh, to um, companies like uh, Google, etc. So everything is possible after this program. Uh, this, uh, everything it depends on your devotion, on your interest and your uh, work. Um, before uh, before uh, stopping this, um, oh, anyone, uh, do you have any, any other questions? Yes, Louisa. Can I, uh, can I just sort of add on that, John, before? Yeah, sure. I can... So when you say that anything is possible and it all depends on your work and devotion. And I also wanted to add in this, I think that's a good point. Uh, so one of the requirements for you to graduate is to do a capstone. Um, and that capstone can be a practical capstone, it could be a thesis capstone. And generally what we have is uh, each term we have you know, companies coming in and uh, uh, presenting ideas that they may have for a capstone that our students could work with. And our students choose, decide whatever project that they're interested in, and they choose to work with them. And as a result, this is also a good step, a good stepping stone um, to get them into that industry environment to see what they like and uh, what they may want to continue. So we also provide that, that, um, uh, that environment uh, for students. John, that's all I wanted to add. Yeah. Um, one more, more note that I would like to add after today's meeting. Um, tomorrow we will have um, the, the same meeting, the same question and answer meeting for our um, industrial engineering and systems management. Uh, the, within the structure of that program, there is a concentration on data analytics. So, um, you may be interested to, uh, to look through this program as well, 
and uh, you may also uh, invite your uh, friends it's especially this is especially for those who have business background because business analytics is a particular case for the data analytics so uh, you i would like to invite you for tomorrow's meeting and maybe you would would find something interesting for you this uh, this is not discouraging you for do, from doing programming if you decided to do programming stuff then you surely should go for computer and information science program and if you are thinking about uh, data science or data analytics then uh, you are welcome for tomorrow's meeting Any other questions? Uh, yes, I would like to ask a uh, question about the GRE waiver. Uh, as I know, there is another option. Either we can take GRE or uh, pass an exam uh, that organizes AUA. Is it right? Did I understand it right? For uh, CIS program, uh, Yes. Who will answer? Yeah, I will answer the, uh, to that okay. question. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, just know that uh, the admissions committee will always uh, give preference to those uh, who will take the test, GRE or GMAT. And for the GRE GMAT, we pay attention only on the quantitative section of the test. And the target score is 50 percentile. If you are unable uh, to take the required uh, test, then there is an internal assessment uh, where your math and statistical concepts will be assessed during an extended interview. Right, if I can add on to what Garnier is saying, just generally speaking, we inter for the CIS program, uh, we interview all of our applicants, um, regardless if you have done the GRE or you haven't done, we interview all of our applicants. But if, like Garna mentioned, you are not able to uh, take the GRE for whatever reason, your interview will be extended and uh, we will uh, test some concepts uh, during that interview. And in addition, you will need uh, to submit uh, a form, a special design form that you can uh, either download from uh, your application or from our uh, admissions webpage under application requirements. You will complete this form and uh, attach to your application. Okay, thank you. Other Any questions? Okay, I guess there are no more questions. So um, please contact us uh, in case if you get those. Um, we, I would like to wish you enjoyable evening as much as it, as it could be now. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay peaceful. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.